I don't understand. My form is perfect. Why can't I run faster than Usain Bolt? Hi guys, welcome back to another Overthrow Disc Golf video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are going to be talking about the power pocket and grips and things. Before we begin, I know that some of you particularly get upset when I don't shave before a video. Oh yeah. That That's for you. The ASMR on that. Yeah. Now we can get started. All right, so the lead arm, probably the most important part of the whole throw if you have everything perfect in your throw, but your lead arm is crap, you're not gonna throw very far. There's a lot of questions surrounding this. Real quick, for those of you who are just like visual learners, just show me what I'm supposed to do and I got it. You need to get here, all right? Now you can leave and tank our audience retention. Have a good day. For the rest of us sticking around for the remainder of the video though, it really is quite simply can you get the disc into this position? Let me describe the position for you that we're trying to get into. What we're trying to do is get the disc about mid chest. You might say that you're trying to get it all the way through the power pocket to the right pec for us righties. In most cases, it's gonna end up around mid chest before we go into the extension. By the time you get into this position, your hand is going to be more towards the back of the disc. So what do I mean by that? The tighter you get into the pocket, the more curl you're gonna have and the more unfurling and whip-like it's going to be. So check out Simon from above here to see what I'm talking about. Now let's talk about hand position on the disc. You need a bit of wrist curl here if you hold the disc up like this and you keep your wrist loose, it should give you enough wrist curl here. We're not talking about touching the disc to your forearm here. If this were a clock face and this were 12 o'clock, so this being 12 o'clock on the disc, we're looking to put our hands somewhere around eight. So somewhere about here, you might see a little sliver of the disc here. I'm not telling you to put your hand on six o'clock all the way back behind here. Again, that's touching the forearm, right? So somewhere about here should do it. Little sliver, about eight o'clock, normal amount of wrist bend. That kind of begs the question, do you just need to start with it bent and keep it there the whole time? Should it be straight and then bend? Do you want to pop it out and then bend it? Well, the answer is that as long as you get in this position, for the most part, they're all acceptable. You can find pros running each one. What I want to make sure that you're not doing is that you're not popping your like elbow out straight here intentionally and putting your elbow in risk. That's what I want to make sure you're not doing. But you can see guys like Ezra being loose enough back here to where their wrist will pop straight, then it'll rebound in the pocket here, and then they'll get into this position, right? Some guys are more or less on the back of the disc. Again, I think this is pretty standard here. Just try to get in this position that you see Simon with. I do find it helpful that if you have trouble getting your wrist curled inside the pocket here, like no matter what you do, it just comes through straight. Go ahead and start with it bent. Do the old Ricky Wysocki wrist curl back here and just keep it curled the whole time through. And then when you go to this extension here, it'll just remain bent. You're not going to actively go out of the pocket like this. Your wrist won't be fast enough to keep up with high speeds. So it's just gonna be out of the pocket here, unfurling, and now you'll still be kind of bent, at which point you'll get your little pivot. Very nice. Now, orientation of the arm. There's been a lot of talk recently about briefcase, not briefcase, noodle, don't noodle. So the benefits of the briefcase, what is the point? Briefcase is like this, is like people are saying, hold it like you're holding a briefcase. Now, when we talk about briefcase carry, most people aren't talking about keeping it perfectly straight up and down like this. Most cases, it's just a little bit like that. The benefits of this is that we can keep the arm loose for longer. If you take a disc and you have it like this, and then you flip it over like this, you're gonna feel some tension in the arm versus here, you can more or less keep it dangly and loose. When you bring it through the pocket like this, it can stay tighter to the body, which is a good thing, before it goes out. Allows people to stay loose. You got guys who aren't doing this who are also throwing far. So Albert Tom is one who's not doing the briefcase thing who obviously throws far enough. Now the question of, how do I bring it in? What is bringing the arm in? I think the best thing you could do is just get the arm here and not worry about what's transporting the arm, right? How the arm gets there. 
If you can do that, that's way better than having to think about all the other stuff I'm about to say, which is not very much. But if you can just think about this position and get in this position and use however much arm you need to use to get into this position, you're gonna be all right. You are going to have to use arm to get into this position. So David Wiggins, he's got his hand moving more than two times as fast as his shoulders are moving, right? If you keep your arm too loose and you don't use any arm, then you just end up where your arm is totally noodled and now your back shoulder is getting in front of your hand. And now you end up throwing from this back shoulder, which is very slow. This like wide arc here is very slow versus if we get our hand in ahead of our shoulders here, now we can uncurl with this smaller, faster arc. So do you need to arm the disc? Yes. In a lot of ways you need to arm the disc. Do you need to absolutely destroy your arm with tension? No. You need to be as loose as possible within this position. So another way of saying that is you only need to be as tight as gets you in this position, right? This would be totally loose. We're obviously not saying that. So get in the position and you're in good shape. How your shoulders and your hips work to get the disc into that position doesn't matter. If you can get here, your shoulders and your hips are moving in sync to get you to the correct position. If you're here, your shoulders move faster than your hand, right? So move your hand faster to get into this position or slow everything else down so that your hand can get here. Now, how to practice it. The best thing is just slow in front of a mirror, perhaps, where you're looking at these positions that Drew and Simon are in, where they're in this mid chest position with the disc, more towards their right pec, going through slowly, making sure that you're there. Some people find it helpful to try to drag the elbow forward for as long as possible to get there. Some people like to think about keeping the hand on the back of the disc for as long as possible. Slow is the way to go on that. Another thing you can do is you can just start it in this position and then throw. Let me give you a couple of those. All right, you ready? Go side. Yeah, I'll throw. He's gonna throw, he's gonna throw. Ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting for this. Yeah, you ready? You probably want side view. Slow mo? No, normal mo is fine. All right, so here we go. Just starting it already in that kind of deep pocket position versus just here bouncing out of the left side. And just go through your normal shot there. Yeah, let's use that one. Um, all right, I think that's probably it. Not much to it, but to do it. We will catch you in the next video. Peace out. I took you